Ford Model A, also colloquially called the A Model Ford or the A, an A bone among riders and customizers, was the second huge success for the Ford Motor Company, after its predecessor, the Model T first produced on October 20, 1927, but not sold until December 2, it replaced the venerable Model T, which had been produced for 18 years. This new Model A, a previous model had used the name in 1903-04, was designated a 1928 model and was available in four standard colors. By February 4, 1929, 1 million Model S had been sold, and by 24th of July, 2 million. The range of body styles ran from the Tudor at 500 US dollars, in gray, green, or black, to the town car with a dual cowl at 1,200 US dollars. In March 1930, Model A sales hit 3 million, and there were 9 body styles available. Model A production ended in March, 1932 after 4,858,644 had been made in all body styles. Its successor was the Model B, which featured an updated four-cylinder engine, as well as the Model 18, which introduced Ford's new flathead, side valve, V8 engine. From the mid-1910s through the early 1920s, Ford dominated the automotive market with its Model T however, during the mid-1920s, this dominance eroded as competitors, especially the various General Motors divisions, caught up with Ford's mass production system and began to outcompete Ford in some areas, especially by offering more powerful engines, new convenience features, or cosmetic customization. Also, features Henry Ford considered to be unnecessary, such as electric starters, were gradually shifting in the public's perception from luxuries to essentials. Ford's sales force recognized the threat and advised Henry to respond to it. Initially he resisted, but the teeth sagging market share finally forced him to admit a replacement was needed. When he finally agreed to begin development of this new model, he focused on the mechanical aspects and on what today is called design for manufacturability, which he had always strongly embraced and for which the Model T production system was famous. Although ultimately successful, the development of the model included many problems that had to be resolved. For example, the die stamping of parts from sheet steel, which the Ford company had led to new heights of development with the Model T production system, was something Henry had always been ambivalent about. It had brought success, but he felt that it was not the best choice for durability. He was determined that the modeler would rely more on drop forgings than the Model T, but his ideas to improve the design for manufacturability of forging did not prove practical. Eventually, Ford's engineers persuaded him to relent, lest the Model A's production cost force up its retail price too much. Henry's disdain for cosmetic vanity as applied to automobiles led him to leave the Model A's styling to a team led by his son Edsel, even though he would take credit for it despite his son doing more of the work. It was during the period from the mid-1920s to early 1930s that the limits of the first generation of mass production, epitomized by the Model T production system's rigidity, became apparent. The era of flexible mass production had begun. Prices for the model ranged from 385 US dollars for a roadster to 1,400 US dollars for the top of the line town car. The engine was a water-cooled L head in line four-cylinder with a displacement of 201 cubic inches, 3.3 liters. This engine provided 40 horsepower. Top speed was around 65 miles per hour, 105 kilometers per hour. The model had a 103.5 in. 2,630 mm wheelbase with a final drive ratio of 3.77 to 1. The transmission was a conventional three-speed sliding gear manual and synchronized unit with a single-speed reverse. The model had four-wheel mechanical drum brakes. The 1930 and 1931 models were available with stainless steel radiator cowling and headlamp housing. The model came in a wide variety of styles including a coupe, standard and deluxe, the business coupe, sport coupe, roadster coupe, standard and deluxe, convertible cabriolet, convertible sedan, phaeton, standard and deluxe, Tudor sedan, standard and deluxe, 
Town Car, Order, 2 Window, Standard and Deluxe, Order, 3 Window, Standard and Deluxe, Victoria, Station Wagon, Taxi Cab, Truck, and Commercial. Citation needed. The very rare special coupe started production around March 1928 and ended mid-1929. The Modelo was the first Ford to use the standard set of driver controls with conventional clutching brake pedals, throttle, and gear shift. Previous Fords used controls that had become uncommon to drivers of other makes. The Model A's fuel tank was situated in the cowl, between the engine compartment's firewall and the dash panel. It had a visual fuel gauge, and the fuel flowed to the carburetor by gravity. A rear view mirror was optional. In cooler climates, owners could purchase an aftermarket cast iron unit to place over the exhaust manifold to provide heat to the cab. A small door provided adjustment of the amount of hot air entering the cab. The Modelo was the first car to have safety glass in the windshield. The Soviet company Gaz, which started as a joint venture between Ford and the Soviet Union, made a licensed version 1932 to 1936. This served as the basis for the FAI and BA-20 armored cars which saw use as Soviet scout vehicles in the early stages of World War II. In addition to the United States, Ford made the model in plants in Argentina, Canada, Denmark, France, Germany, Japan and the United Kingdom. In Europe, where in some countries cars were taxed according to engine size, Ford in the United Kingdom manufactured the Modeler with a smaller displacement engine of 2,043 cc providing a claimed output of 28 horsepower. However, the engine equated to a British fiscal horsepower of 14.9 horsepower, compared to the 24 horsepower of the larger engine, and attracted a punitive annual car tax levy of £1 per fiscal HP in the United Kingdom. It therefore was expensive to own and too heavy and thirsty to achieve volume sales, and so unable to compete in the newly developing mass market, while also too crude to compete as a luxury product. European manufactured model has failed to achieve the sales success in Europe that would greet their smaller successor in England and Germany. Basic black was, of course, Henry Ford's favorite color, but other colors were available, including the handsome green shown here, which is either balsam green or valley green, depending on whose color chart you're using. Ford was building hundreds of thousands of model S, and the books show that more than 208,000 two-door sedans were built in 1928, making it the most popular model by far. The body received a comprehensive restoration before it was reassembled, probably better than new to be honest. For Ford fans, it's worth noting that this car isn't overdressed, using a proper single-stage paint that more closely approximates the lacquer that was originally used. Contrasting dark green on the belt moldings adds a subtle touch that was entirely Edsel Ford's doing, making the A attractive as well as functional. A single rear-mounted spare is a refreshing choice, most restorers add dual side mounts, the drum's tile taillights are correct for an early 1928 production car, the left one was standard while the right side could be a dealer installed option, and the long grain vinyl top is very nicely finished. The top upholstery is very period correct and is quite attractive inside the lovely green sedan. More upscale than you'd expect, it has a comfortable 1920s look and details like the shiny door hardware, map pockets in the doors, and attractive garnish moldings add to the upscale look. As usual, front seat passengers got a rubber mat, but the rear seat is carpeted and feels luxurious with plenty of stretch out space. The A's usual single instrument panel with basic gauges remains the highlight of the interior, along with a hard red rubber steering wheel with a spark control on the left and throttle on the right, and the headlight switch in the center. Of note, this car also carries a correct windshield wiper motor for its build date and turn signals were added during the restoration in the name of safety. But other than that, this one remains very much the way Henry intended. I'll do my best.
Say 